Today I am going to show you how to replace the blender actuator gear on a WK2 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Mine happens to be a 2012, but I believe it's the same procedure for all the WK2s. Don't hold me to it. It's not a hard repair. You can do everything with hand tools. Uh, you're going to need some millimeter sockets and a T15 Torx bit. There is this one Torx screw at the top of the whole assembly that's wedged in behind a bracket. For me, getting that thing out and back in was about 75% of this job. I'm not joking. Um, and uh, I think if I'd had the right tool, a nice shallow T15 wrench, something with a ratchet maybe, I think it would have been, it would have been like saved the day. So hopefully you'll be able to get your hands on something like that before you start this. But if not, I'll just show you what worked for me and uh, should work for you too. Not that I take any responsibility for anything that goes wrong with this. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the uh, blend door actuator gear from my 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee. I am replacing this thing now for the second time on the driver's side and I've replaced it one other time on the passenger side. I'm not exactly shocked that those failed, right? This guy, however, broke off on this beefy area right here. It's not necessarily going to break right there on that one spot. I could have gotten me the original equipment, but uh, they wanted $21.69 for the one part. Uh, and I decided I'd save myself some money, and I got the Dorman version. And I got it you know, shipped real quick from Amazon for like $11.50. So that's not bad. It was $23 for a set of two. And uh, since I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to replace this again, now I've got a spare. Okay, so first thing we gotta do is like we gotta pull back this little bit of weather stripping on the front door. Just kind of get your fingers under there and give it a good yank. It doesn't it doesn't fetch you too hard. It pops off. Um, once you got that off, get yourself probably something a little plasticky, not scratchy that can get up underneath this panel right here. And don't be afraid to kind of work it. It's not gonna break. Um, you'll see a little close-up of the clips that they use under here. They're actually really nice. Um, I've pulled things off in cars before, and the clips just look like they're not reusable and they should break, but these, they're really nice. they got these little caps that go over the top and they squeeze on. Um, I should have gotten a close-up of that, but I didn't. Anyhow, so you got that part. Now, here we are, cameras on the floor looking up. We've got uh, to remove that felt panel right there so we have access. Two little pop rivets that need to come out there. And they're going to fight you a little bit, but not too bad. Um, just give it a good tug. Don't be afraid of it. Next, you got to remove these four screws. Um, I used a power drill, but you can easily get these off with just a hand tool. Uh, and then this collar. Now, this is going to feel like you're about to break something, but and you probably don't even need this spudger, actually. Uh, you, don't, you won't need a spatula. Just get your fingers in there behind the left side and the right side. There are those same clips that we saw on that side panel. There are two on either side of above that need to pull directly out towards the driver. And there's one at the very bottom. In the videos, uh, people talked about taking out two screws, uh, the videos that I watched. Um, but then I realized something after I took out the second, the right side screw at the top. And I think I got a close up for us here. That panel is not actually attached to that screw. Um, they just have a little clip that goes in there and that's it. So you can leave that screw alone and it'll just pop off the clips. There's a close up of the clips on that collar that I was talking about. So it, yeah, it looks like that screw is just for this wooden part, this fake wood panel thing. I, that might be robot on top. I, I've always assumed it was real wood. So I'm gonna keep telling myself it's real wood because it makes me feel like I got a fancier car. We gotta pop some clips off here. And this thing just comes out nice and easy. And then you got to disconnect. That's the light switch. You pull that little red dealy back, pop that right off. And then for the, um, the gas door um, actuator button that, that unlocks the gas door, you pull that little clip towards you. And that slides right off. This guy, this is the, the uh, hood release lever. You just press that little clip in the middle down and the whole thing slides right out nice and easy. Uh, and here we are uh, getting our first look at what we're trying to get to. It's that part. I think I get a little better lighting on this. See right there where that gear is? Right, right there in the upper right. Uh, you can see the motor housing in front of it and in the gear. 
in front of that. To help us get there, we gotta get this plate off. Four screws, so come on nice and easy. This guy was a little more work, but not too bad. There's uh, two, three screws you gotta go out here, so two bolts. Now notice how I'm using my little uh, nifty, you know, multi-angle socket thing here. Uh, but you know what? Yeah, it would have been that easy. Just a little pro tip for you. It's easy to get. Uh, and then that clip has one last little screw up here under the column. Make sure you get the right one. I actually pulled the wrong one out the first time. But there's the, uh, there's the part. Now this part's kind of cool. There's a, this little pin that shoots up in between those little plastic bits. I'm sure it has a, a good name, but you just get a little screwdriver in there, push that pin back out. Uh, there's, there's a little, little shot of the pin. And then uh, with that missing, those uh, two, the edges of that little beak can push together and they pull right through. That guy's easy. Just get your fingers underneath that little tab there and uh, it clips right up. Uh, okay, and now we have full access to the motor. Uh, that's that's the, the actuator motor on top. Uh, and there, we can just see dangling below is our broken piece. Uh, let's see if I get the GoPro in here, I think. Yeah, pops right out. Okay, check out that screw right there. Um, that screw in the upper right above the power coupling there. Um, Wow. Wow, that thing was just a beast. A lot of it has to do with this bracket that's uh, up here at the top of the screen. It's really in the way. It's kind of hard to tell exactly how squeezed in it is, but you really do need a special tool to get to that. Uh, so here we are, GoPro on the floor looking up. Uh, you got to pull that little red tab back and that thing just slides out easy as pie. Uh, and now, yeah, there I am. So this was my first attempt. I thought, well, you know what? I will take the little um, T15, that's what's in there right now, I'll clamp it into my vice grips, because it was the only thing I had that would hold it. And this shot doesn't really do it justice, but you really don't have the space to do like a full turn or even a half turn. I don't even think it lets you do a quarter turn. So let me show you this. I took my cutoff bit, and I got my high glue gun, and I put it in there, and I let things sort of, you know, solidify. Manny. There's no way that hot glue is going to hold that screw while you're torquing on it. You're right, it's not. So, I got out the smallest bread nails that I have in the house. And I jammed them down in between the sides of the hex bit. And uh, that thing wasn't moving left or right or anywhere. And the glue, you know, held everything in place for me. Uh, you just snip off the extra length of the nails in the back and you're good to go. But you know what? barely fit up in there so yeah but it did help me get that bottom screw off nice and easy i hopped on amazon after all this was done i'm like well wait a minute look at this guy for 33 bucks i could have saved myself two hours worth of work now that is a ratchet i wish it would ratchet or if you find a better tool that'd be even better find the perfect tool and let us all know please Honestly, the new nose players probably got the most work done for me. I was able to do about, I don't know, an eighth of a turn each time. It did mar up the side of my screw a little bit, but I think it worked better than the other items. And there he is, one inch of pure fury. The fruits of our labor. We are pulling this whole motor off, and there goes the other half of the broken piece. That is the gear that this gear operates. Uh, you can imagine it's attached to a drum that has an opening on one side. Um, and as that gear turns, the drum points more towards the hot or more towards the cold. But yeah, it just kind of dangles there. This doesn't do a lot of work. It, it's, it's pretty well balanced. It's very light. Um, that gear doesn't have to push very hard. There's a, there's a little close up there of the wheel in place um, doing work. Uh, so here's a close up of the motor. And uh, fortunately, that wasn't something that needed to be repaired. There's that missing spline. You can't put it on in the wrong position, right? I want to make sure this thing lines up with the gear that's in there. And if you recall from the video earlier, it's dangling down. Uh, so when we put this in there, we want that fat tooth in the middle there to line up with the other the fat group that that fits into. 
When we go in with this motor, we're gonna have to kind of go in sideways so that it's lined straight up and down, right? Just like the, just like the dangling gear inside. And uh, then we'll turn it into position and screw it in. We wanna come in with our gear in place on the motor. And we're gonna try to line this up. Now, the GoPro's got a great view of this. I can't see anything, so this takes a minute. And I gotta kinda move it around and hope that I'm lining it up right. And there. Now for the fun part. If you think taking this guy off was hard, getting it started in that tiny little space without the right tool uh, and you don't have the tiniest fingers. I, I almost went inside and got my eight-year-old to do this for me. And now we gotta do the calibration part. So uh, I don't know if this is part of the factory specs, but um, it seemed like everybody did this. If you have a WK2 uh, Grand Cherokee, your um, battery is under the passenger seat. Go ahead and disconnect the negative from your battery. So we let that sit for like maybe 20 minutes. Oh, they also recommended pulling the fuse for this. So you can get out your manual and you know, for this guy, it's in the M11 slot. After 20 minutes, plug the battery back in. Just hand tight, don't get crazy. It just needs to not slip off there. Close that lid. And yes, we do have a dog. And then we go through and we run it through its paces. Oh, and for God's sake, people, please open your garage door. I remember pretty quick, but maybe do it before you turn. So there it is on the high heat. We're gonna go down to low, and you should hear it changing. I hope you heard that. Um, you actually do sort of hear it switch from one channel to the other uh, down below. So um, it worked. And that's it. Not a particularly difficult repair, except for that one screw, hopefully you'll have a better tool for it and uh, you'll get it done that much quicker. Catch you next time.